Hey, good evening guys. Tosh coming at you. Wednesday, July the 5th. Just coming up to 10 to 6 in the p.m. Just home from work. And straight out to the garage. And so we're at T-74 today. And I think what I uh, decided to do today was to do a bit of a uh, parts unboxing. I managed to make it in my mailbox today. And I've got uh, two, four, seven boxes to uh, unbox. So I thought you might want to have a look at what I've uh, ordered for the car thus far. I do have another rather large parts order coming in the near future, but we'll show, go through these boxes and see what we have so far. All right, we'll be back. I'm going to set you up on a tripod. All right, guys, here we go in no particular order. Um, some of these you are aware of that I had ordered, but probably haven't uh, seen them. So I'll try to keep you in frame as much as possible. But uh, excuse me if I get you out of frame, because I can't really unbox and see the back of the camera. Oh, you know what I could probably do? I could probably turn my viewfinder, which I don't do very often, so I can at least see that i am got you in the uh, picture. Alright, so this first one is from a company called uh, Classic Technologies, and uh, this is the... Mark Goldblatt, let me see if you can see this, ceiling block. So this is the installation uh, tip documentation. So there you go. So, Classic Technologies also does a fuse box, uh, which I've seen a few people install in their TR6s, so, but uh, I'm not interested in that at this particular time. As you know, I've got an engine build on the go. So, I've got Mark's ceiling block, which is a new machined piece, because the other pieces, they strip out very, very easily. So Mark's also supplied the little uh, wooden blocks as well. So, and uh, business card it looks like. So there you go. So there is the new ceiling block. Very shiny. So that'll be put to uh, to good use in the uh, engine rebuild. And I'll show you where that goes. Um, I showed you where it came from when I took the engine apart, but I'll show you where it goes when we go and uh, rebuild the engine fully. We'll reinstall this and uh, use the little wooden ceiling blocks um, in place. So there you go, there's the first unboxing. Come back in a sec. All right guys, box number two. And this is from British Parts Northwest. Some of the stuff I remember what I ordered and some I don't, so it's kind of almost a surprise for me as it is for you. I think I know what this one is try to order stuff when it's on sale or on special so uh, yep oh so I've got a brand new high torque starter for the 250 so uh, I did rebuild the starter already for the 250 but uh, I always like the uh, I have a high torque starter in my uh, TR6 and my TR3 and I uh, love it so we've got a brand new uh, high torque starter much much lighter than the original equipment as well and they spin the engine over so much faster so I'm happy to uh, be installing that on the uh, rebuild and as usual British Parts Northwest always sends some form of candy so you can have the orange one I'll have the blue one okay the next box is kind of exciting this is from uh, Ken at uh, British Sports Car Restorations in Murraysville Pennsylvania so uh, Ken contacted me and uh, knew I was looking for some engine components for my rebuild. So Ken's helped me out uh, sourcing these. So, what we have here? those later. All right, so rings checked. So these are 
my new pistons and rings. Quick look at these guys. There they are. 30 over. Oh, get them into uh, camera. So there they are. Looking nice and shiny. Not broken like the ones that came out of the car. <laughs> so we'll put those to good use. I've got to deliver these up to the machine shop with the engine block so uh, they can finally get the engine block up to the machine shop now. So we'll be doing that uh, shortly because I know there will be a bit of a wait to get that back. So anyway, pistons have arrived as well as piston rings. All right. On to the next box. All right, another uh, box from uh, British Parts Northwest. Careful to cut on, not to cut off any digits that I might need. I wonder if we'll get different color suckers in this one. Wasn't very exciting. All right, so this one we've got a pan gasket set. Okay, made in Italy. So that looks good. I don't know if you can see that very well. Pretty much got everything I need in there: head gasket, intake, exhaust gasket, valve cover gasket and a bunch of other stuff. Looks like um, water pump, thermostat, etc. So we're good to go on that. Miscellaneous seal, so basically transmission seals, uh, timing cover seals. Yeah. Let's see what we got here. So time, timing cover seal. Wheel bearing seals, so these are the felt seals for the uh, for the wheel bearings, front wheel bearings. This is the oil crank seal for the crankshaft. I think that's the timing cover seal, the pinion seal for the differential, and then you have another wheel. Um, felt seal and the transmission front seal. So a whole bunch of seals that are required. Then we have the other gasket conversion set. So engine plates, oil or sump cover, etc. So I don't know if you can be able to see that. It's a pretty big package, but. Uh, there you go. So throw that with the other one. Parts inside. Let's check out what parts are inside. Oh. Uh, okay, you can have the yellow one. I want the red one or the pink one. So let's put those over here. Let's see. Nothing in this. That. Good thing they label parts inside on this because I might have thrown it out. Let's see what this is. Got no idea. Oh, more gaskets. So these are um, A type overdrive gaskets or transmission gaskets to uh, seal the transmission back up. These are differential cover gaskets, and you always order at least two of those. So we've got a couple of uh, differential gaskets and again this is for the uh, transmission as well. So much more gaskets. So all right we're done with another box. On to the next one. All right this box looks familiar because it's the uh, box that I 
packed my parts up into send down to Phil in California. So uh, Phil is a gentleman on the uh, six pack forums who's well known for rebuilding among other things uh, rear hubs for 250s and TR6s as well as uh, pulling those flanges off of the um, differential um, the stub axles and the differential which are notoriously hard to uh, to get off that's interesting uh, material kind of like a rat's nest anyway so these are my newly refurbished axles and we'll just unpack them Pack really nicely. Thank you, Phil. Alright, so you can already tell they look great. So there they are with new bearings, new seals, all put back together, new nuts. They look fantastic. They look a hundred percent better than uh, when I sent them away. There they are. They look absolutely fantastic. So, thanks, Phil. They look great. And uh, very economical. Even for me to be able to send them from Canada all the way down to California, still was a good deal for me to do that. And to have a reputable builder do them for you and somebody that you want to give your business to, that's kind of what's key for me. So, that's why I didn't have an issue sending these parts away all the way to California. I'd actually talked to my local uh, British car mechanic and I asked him for a suggestion on a machine shop to press those flanges off or to get the flanges off. And he couldn't really recommend anybody local to me so I was going to have to send them away anyway. So I figured I may as well just send them along to Phil and I'm, I'm glad I did. Phil's also sent back all of my old bearings for me to have a look at. So. Uh, yeah, Phil changed the bearings for me. Um, I didn't ask him to do that, but he uh, had a look at the bearings and thought they, they could be replaced while I was in there. So he went, went ahead and did those for me, and uh, I'm grateful that he did. So always nice to have the old parts back, too. So thanks again, Phil, for looking after those flanges and oil seals for me and bearings. All right, next box. So the next two boxes are from uh, Andy. We'll say Andy in... Uh, New Jersey. Andy is uh, a six-pack um, forum member as well, six-pack car club member, uh, who I met actually in uh, Long Island, New Jersey when we did a uh, six-pack trials event there uh, one year. So Andy is working on a uh, high-end, let's say, uh, TR250 restoration. And I think he's coming to the end of it. It's been a few years he's been working on it. So Andy has a few parts uh, that he has left over and uh, He's contacted me and asked me if I wanted to buy them. Obviously, I, he knows what I need since he's been doing this restoration uh, over the past number of years. He's aware of what I require to get my car back together. So he's emailed me with a, a few parts that he has left over from, him, from his build that, that he knew that I could use. So I purchased a few parts from Andy to help me in my restoration. So this is always good to have at least one or two of one to carry as a spare and one to have on the car. So as you know my car runs triple Weber carbs but you may not know it actually runs the stock mechanical fuel pump from the Triumph factory on it so Andy had an extra fuel pump and he has sold that to me so it looks fabulous so we'll put that on the car and then I've got the original that I took off the car we'll use as a backup and we'll keep in the trunk. So pretty, shiny, nice. All right, the next box, which is uh, significantly larger than the uh, last box that Andy sent me, is about 70 pounds in weight. Can you guess what it is? And anyway, we'll, we'll unbox it and have a look at it. You have to appreciate the effort it uh, must have been to pack this. Um, packing a crankshaft that weighs 70 pounds and shipping it in the mail is quite the task. So, <laughs> lots of uh, bubble wrap, let's say, and pa extra padding in there. So, it looks great. It's a uh, long back crank, they call it, for the TR250. Um, it's been polished, it's been balanced, 
it's been magnafluxed and it's been nitrated. So yeah, that's going to be a big piece to the car. So I'm happy with that. It's arrived safely. So we'll uh, store it safely until uh, we're ready to use that. And that should be hopefully shortly within the next few weeks anyway. I've got the old crank just sitting up here. So uh, there's the backup crank. And we may uh, need that for a future project. Who knows? We'll just hang on to it. But uh, all the work's been done. He also sent some bearings along with it. I will have to get this uh, size just to make sure that the bearings are actually matched to the crank. He sent me the, uh, the rod and main bearings. And they are both at uh, 10 uh, over. So, um, or 10 under, I guess. And uh, yeah, it looks fantastic. So eager to get that in the back in the uh, motor where it should be all right guys that's it for the unboxing maybe we'll actually do some work on the car all right guys let's do some work so uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna finish off where we left off as far as this patch is concerned I just did a little more cleaning up of this area here so I get some weld down in here so I just broke out the little uh, stone on my die grinder on my um, my Dremel to clean that corner up actually a couple corners up where I could get some uh, the point in to get uh, the metal clean so I can get the weld to stick. So uh, we're just going to finish that up and uh, then we're going to do something that's going to piss all the TR250 purists off. But they haven't been pissed off already. <laughs> so uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut this piece out to make some space for my triple Webers. So we'll come back when we're getting around to doing that. Okay guys, we've got that uh, patch welded in over there and uh, we just got to go back now and grind it down. We need to grind this side down as well, as well as this patch up here. So we're going to have a, a power hour of grinding at some point. But uh, right now anyway, while that cools down, we're going to uh, move on to this section, aforementioned section, uh, of a little cutout here in the uh, passenger side wheel well. So this is factory stock clearance for the carburetors. And as you know, this car runs with triple Webers. Uh, and it's extremely tight to get a third or a front filter on the front uh, Weber carburetor on this car. Um, it actually touches the inner fender. And that's with the thin pancake style filters that the previous owner was running on this car. Now, it might have looked okay, but uh, unfortunately the previous owner did not run with velocity stacks or uh, air horns installed in the uh, Weber carbs and the carbs do not like that so we're gonna definitely want to run back with some short uh, velocity stacks in the carbs which means I'm gonna have to run a little bit of clearance uh, for the front carburetor so that means that I'm gonna have to cut this little section out a little bit to give it some clearance I may as well do it now rather than complain about it later so for all you 250 purists out there yes I'm gonna cut this inner fender up and uh, no, it's not the end of the world. Um, if somebody really wants to put this car back to stock at a later date, they can always uh, refabricate it to look like the stock mounting, or they can buy a new inner fender, so I'm not too worried about it. So we've got the uh, cutting disc out, so uh, we've got a rough outline of where we want to cut this. Um, you've got to be considerate of this hole here, which is a mounting point for the uh, front valence stay rod, so uh, we don't really want to interfere with that too much, so we'll try to maybe cut uh, just behind that. All right, guys, we'll come back when the cut is done. And obviously, I'm going to try to make this look like it's sort of a factory uh, wheel well. So for those people that don't know trams really well, they won't actually clue into this, that this piece has actually been extended on this car. All right, well, that's a big hole. No going back now. So we'll figure out uh, how to make this patch. Might have been a good idea to figure that out before I cut it out. So since the only thing I really got done on the car tonight was that uh, finishing welding in that patch, I didn't even get it ground down yet. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just upload what I have and uh, do the unboxing of the parts. And uh, we'll start fresh on this uh, patch over here and uh, figure that out tomorrow. But at least you'll have a video for tonight to watch. So maybe we'll do that.